Uh, what happened here, Jeb? Jeb, I thought you were dead. How did you get here? I managed to hit your ride. Anyhow, you've been in and out in consciousness for the last couple of days, but the doc says you'll be alright. Took a pretty nasty blow to the head. Ow. Uh, yeah, thanks, Jeb. Damn the sticks. Are we gonna strike back? Not so fast. I found some information while I was away. Turns out the Nat have played both sides. They've been hacking our systems and placing false information, making both sides ignore the real threat. They've been rounding up Kerbals too old or ill to fight for some reason. We need to stop them. Are we nearly back at KSC? We should be any minute. Let's go. Hello, I'm Enter Elysium, and this is World War K. We're playing Kerbal Space Program. So, we've rebuilt. We're now in version 0.21. And there are enemy tanks on the horizon, so somehow we have to defend ourselves against a bunch of tanks. I'm thinking, let's actually try and build a mech, or something with legs for once. Now, unfortunately we can't really go bipedal, because uh, being bipedal requires a lot of joints and hip flexors and careful balance things. I mean... It's a very careful balancing act to be a bipedal creature, and um, I think DARPA, the uh, Defense American Project Research thingy, basically, the guys who make all the cool stuff, um, they've experimented with it, but they haven't really used it other than, oh, look, we have a walking thing that we might use for testing chemical protection or something. Um, It's because, like, if you go go ahead and stand up at some point in, like, you know, now, or pause the video, or just, you know, in a little bit, try walking forwards by only moving your legs, like, without actually having to change your balance, and you'll notice that you start shuffling legs sideways very slowly, and it's because you require to move your center of balance over the leg that you're standing on while you move the other leg. And if we were to do this, it would be a very careful case of using Dan Robotics, well, Inferno Robotics, to carefully try and tilt one way and then tilt the other, and it doesn't really support that. So at the moment I'm just playing around with some of the uh, different designs and so on, and um, I'm trying to think about to see if I can get a quadruped working, but I think ultimately the most stable form is to go with a six-legged uh, design where you have like a set of two on one side and one on the other that move, and then two on the other side and then one on that side move, and then you do that. Because if you've got four legs, you're working on a diagonal, so the front like left leg and the back right leg go up and then you sort of tilt one way or the other. And it's not very stable, and I don't think it really works, to be honest. But yeah, this is a this is a very early prototype of one of the quadrupeds that just completely fails. You know, spoiler. But uh I think you you really need six legs if you don't have any real control of the center balance because this is what I'm talking about when you get some sort of diagonal happening. Yeah, it's um it's pretty retarded. Um, so yeah, you really need six legs to be able to get anything like this to work. And of course, that doesn't look as awesome as like uh, a Metal Gear or something or bipedal. And of course there is a massive advantage to having a bipedal robot of any kind. Um, like if we're talking like scale of like armor, like tanks and stuff, being bipedal doesn't really give you a big difference. Like a tank can go over a lot of rubble quite easily. Um, a bipedal robot could probably do the same thing if you could get it to work with all the complicated technology and the hinging systems. There isn't a massive advantage in that, which is why no one's really looked into it as fully. Now the closer we can get with something that's actually, you know, semi-viable at the moment is um, DARPA's uh, Big Dog, which is basically, it's, it's designed to be a pack horse type system for troops in the field. It's got four legs and it's pretty cool actually, like it it can 
like uh, what's it compensate for being like kicked and pushed and it's got four legs and it sort of goes duh, 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 duh. and there's some really good YouTube videos that they put up but like uh, uh, recently they've actually added a, an arm to it where the head should be so you've got this sort of crazy demon dog robot thing and there's a video of it throwing like a concrete ble breeze block with this arm just straight away over its back and smashing it to really amazing and also freaky because you know if we give them sentience, then it could probably kill you. Um, which, you know, of course isn't gonna happen. At least not for a very, very long time. Um, I'm not an expert in computer science, so... You know... Computer sentience... You know... As a science fiction geek, I'd probably be like... I don't know, it probably could happen, but... Nowhere near where we are now. I don't know at what level computers would have to operate to be able to get the same sort of... Thinking process as a human brain. Obviously a long way off, um, so you know, don't worry about Skynet just yet. But yeah, uh, I, I finally give up with the mech because the six-legged one was going to look pretty naff. And you know, these tanks are attacking us advancing, so... So I was like, right, well, the enemy is sending like three heavy tanks, so why don't we go with some light tanks and have a slightly higher numbers? So if we can produce four light tanks, and then we'll outnumber them four free, and see if we can take them on that way. Now this is somewhat more recreating uh, sort of Second World War, where the Allies had a lot of light tanks in general, and the Germans had the heavier tanks, and Panzer had uh, heavier armor um, in some places than, say, the Sherman. And of course, then they had the Tiger tank, which admittedly was in much smaller numbers because uh, the bugger broke down all the time because it was so heavy. So yes, we're gonna go with a, a, a slightly less armoured version, but much faster, got more mobility and motility, and you know what, we might even chuck some of our specially designed missiles on it. So these northern allied tanks that are attacking us won't stand a chance, maybe. The missiles were never really designed, and here's the final version. These missiles were never really designed for in-atmosphere use for proper, especially from ground, because of course they'll dip as they launch until they can get the thrust up to, like, maximum at which point they'll take off but they'll dip so you have to aim them slightly up and if you aim them slightly up and they dip and then go up they'll obviously go up and not hit anything on the ground so they're not really a ground to ground usage missile but of course we're using the Gatling cannon DYJ's uh, newly updated GAU-19 DYJ miscellaneous Gatling cannon beautiful little thing and uh, Jebediah Kerman will be leading the uh, the charge. Now the advantages we have over the enemy tanks are we've got you know higher top speed, we've got a little bit more armament because we've got the missiles, we've got uh, a better turning circle. Disadvantages is these wheels suck. They they blow up very easily. Uh, we have very little armor. We're back heavy, which is a design flaw. We need to put some sort of weight on the front in the future, I think. Um, yeah, so we'll see how this goes. Now the rules for the coming engagement are each unit gets to take a turn. A turn is a rough unit of time that I roughly measured. Um, and you know, you can move and shoot in that unit, just to be fair. And then we go around and then we do that again. So, let's just get the unit in position. Now I'm thinking that they're on the hill up there, and we don't want to engage them while they're on the hill, because then they have the advantage of having partial cover, because um, they'll be hull down against the hill, and we'll have to be fighting uphill. And also, we're back heavy, so if we go uphill and, you know, I pilot badly, things could go wrong. So right, we now have all the units in position. Four of them. We've got Jebediah, Bill... Bill's joining as well. He's feeling a lot better from that blow on the head. Siegfell, Kerman. You know, um, he's just out of the academy. We literally just hired him. He wanted to uh, fight the Northern Allied aggressors. And we've got Bob, who is um, not a badass either, but, you know, he tries. And he's, he's another veteran. So, let's begin the war. These uh, Nat tanks are very heavily armed, as you can see. 
with an armored turret. Our turret is lacking the armor because of um, manufacturing problems. I'm going to go with manufacturing problems. And they're firing off some ranging shots now, but I, I believe we're still out of range. It's something like, what, two and a half kilometers or something. So we'll, we'll be fine over here, probably. As the defenders, of course, we have the advantage of uh, having, like, we can choose to let them come to us or we can go to them. So they're coming to us because of the uh, we don't fight them on the hill. And it looks like they've got out of position while coming down that hill. There's two here, but one of them seems to have gone off to the left somewhere. Might be trying a, a cunning flanking maneuver, but it does allow us to isolate him. Or, you know, isolate the two and then go for him. So, right, Jebediah is... Uh, Taking the first action. He's going to try and stop the flanking one from outflanking the entire force and turn towards him to produce a, a lower profile because, of course, the side is a much bigger thing to hit than the front. He's aiming. Firing! And way too high. Probably should have put the brakes on, but um, yeah, that's a miss for Jebediah. You can see the problem with the being back heavy there. The gun's almost tipping us over at some points. And then that's moving in for their attack. Five one shot. Looks like a miss. We should be okay. Oh no, we've been hit. Oh! Oh! Looks like they got the Gatling Cannon. And some of our wheels. And we're upside down. Okay! Go, Bill, go! I think if you avenge the one that attacked Jebediah, or well, you avenge Jebediah on the one that attacked him, he is very close, so he can probably get basically point blank and take. A very, very point blank shot. Here we go. Fire! Well, I think he won't be coming back. The missiles did a good job there, actually. But now it's in that turn. And they're going to ignore Bill and take out Bob and Siegfried if they can. A uh, Siegfeld. But that's a very long range. I think it's unlikely that actually hit. Yeah, uh, it looks like he's hit both of them. Uh, let's hope that the damage isn't that much and we can actually respond because he's got pretty close. Uh, okay, that one's upside down. Bob, I think, is out of the fight. And is this... what is this? Is this Siegfeld? He's going for a ram? Yeah. He's got no turret weapons, so he's going to try and ram the enemy tank and jump out the last minute. Jump! And... Ram it, you did nothing. Because it's a it's a heavy tank. Uh, and we rammed it with a very light tank. And of course, we're only going like 60 miles an hour. Which, you know... Is apparently not that much for a tank. So the Nat are engaging. At the moment, we only have one operational tank with a weapon. And that's the one with Bill in it. But this one's in the way in front. Oh! Okay, yep, the Nat... Yeah, the Nat tank managed to run over Siegfell and destroy... Bill's weapon. What have we got left? Right, Jebediah has... He's got his missiles left, and he's upside down. All right, so let's see if we can aim these. The problem is, as I said, they do dip on launch, and we're firing them next to the ground. But he is point blank. Well, almost point blank. He's very close. Did we get a hit? No. No, we did not. And we have no operational tanks left, I think. 
We'll have to check what state Bob's tank is in. He was the one left over that we haven't moved so far, the one who got turned over at that extreme range by the tank. And then that tank managed to miss all its shots, going straight over or around it. Right, Bob, this is your chance. You can do it. To us proud. Come on. Aim carefully. Strike true. Even then, there's like tanks left and I don't know what we're going to do with them. Well, there'll be one tank left. There's two at the moment. We'd kill one of them. And no, the main bulk of the missile's going straight over. The first real engagement against the Nat. And that's a horrific loss. We've traded four for one. Which, incidentally, was also about the... Uh, number of tanks it took to bring down one, uh, number of Shermans it took to bring down one Tiger tank in the Second War. Don't quote me on that, that's anecdotal. And now they're going to march on the KSC. Well, we need, uh, we need to do something about this. Next time. Yes, I've been Enter Elysium, and this has been World War K. We're now in point 21. I'm running substantially less mods. Uh, I'll have to rewrite the mod section. Um, and yes, I'm sorry this episode was late, but I've been helping on live streams. And there's also some collabs coming up, and many other delicious and amazing things for the channel. Uh, so right, I will catch you uh, next episode and next video that you watch. Um, cool. Yeah. Stay shiny, everybody. <laughs>